Good morning. Let me say, first of all, happy 70th birthday to Livingstone. 70 wonderful, blessed years have God allowed this, this church to be in this location here in Little Rock. And through these 70 years, there have been ups and there's been down, but it is safe to say God has still been good and he's still blessing uh, this local body. And so, again, happy birthday, Livingstone. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for your mercy, your grace, your love, your compassion. God, thank you for watching over us uh, when we're not able to watch over ourselves. God, you have provided for us continuously, even in the midst of this current storm that we're in. God, you're still very much visible and active in our lives. And God, we say thank you for that. God, we thank you for your word and uh, thank you for your power, your presence, and your anointing. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, again, happy birthday to Living Stone. Seventy years is, is quite an accomplishment, uh, but let me say it's not an accomplishment that, that we did on our own. If it had not been for God, it would not have been 70 years, but uh, we've learned to give God praise for everything that he's doing, what he has done, and, and faith says we give him praise for what he's yet done because we know he's still, he's still not done yet. He still has work to do. So, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. If anybody was here, I'd say I hear some pages turning, but ain't nobody here, so. Luke chapter 5, verse 1. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them where they were washing their nets. Get into one of the boats, which was Simon's. He asked him to put out a little uh, from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish that their nets were breaking. He signaled to the partners in the other boat to come to help them, and they came and filled their boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, I am a sinful man, O Lord. And he and all those who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to the land, they left everything and followed him. Uh, just for a moment, I want to speak on the subject, when your faith is stretched. When your faith is stretched. Uh, life can be difficult at times as well as unpredictable. Even when you plan. Uh, things don't always turn out the way that you plan. Who could have planned for a worldwide pandemic? Millions of people are now out of work. Uh, stimulus checks have gone out to millions to attempt to boost the economy, and still millions didn't receive a check because uh, there was a system glitch. Small business loans have gone out for the stimulus plans, and yet the money has already run out. Barbers, hairstylists, waiters, waitresses, workers at the mall, and many others were forced from their livelihood. Uh, this is a mixed group of people we're talking about, black, white, Hispanic, Asian. Believers and non-believers all are going through a tough time at the same time. It's times like this that will test your faith and, test and cause you to stretch your faith. Uh, when your faith has been put to the test, it will separate the men from the boys. It will be like Peter saying when he told the Lord, I will lay down my life for you. And God says, Peter, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. It's one thing to say what you would do if you've never been in that situation. But it's an entirely different thing to put to the test, to say that I will bless the Lord at all times uh, when things are going well. But it's another thing to say it, that when you're in the midst of the storm, still recite the words, I will bless the Lord at all times. Right now, uh, our faith has been stretched. Uh, even on a Sunday morning, we're no longer gathering because of the shelter-in-place mandate. Uh, we find ourselves having to stretch our faith to be able to say that God is still who he is. We don't say that God is who he is because we come and we gather and we congregate on a Sunday morning at one location because when we leave this place, we're leaving with the same God. God is who he is regardless of where we meet. And the truth of the matter is 
uh, the church is not the building, but the people. So where the people go, the church goes. And God has now breaking the strings of the tradition of how we are normally functioning on a Sunday morning, that he may break us from the mold to say this is the only way we can get the word of God out. Now God says, now my word has been freed and loose. So my people have been freed and loose. Uh, this story takes us to a place. Uh, he's not speaking from the beautiful synagogue. He's not preaching inside the temple where the crowd is listening to an expose of a favorite psalm. But instead, the people are pressed around Jesus on a smelly landing where fishermen nearby are cleaning their nets after a long, fruitless night of fishing. It is important to know that Jesus entered the world of the people, and he didn't wait for them to enter his. That's what discipleship is all about. Uh, without so much as a hello, Jesus climbed into Peter's boat and requests his services. This is not the first time Peter has encountered Jesus. Uh, back in chapter 4, we read that Jesus entered the house of Simon, where his mother-in-law was sick of a fever. Jesus rebuked the fever, and she was immediately Heal. So the readers of this gospel assume that Peter owes Jesus one for the healing of his mother-in-law. So maybe that's why Peter didn't object when Jesus got into the boat without even asking him. Uh, it's Jesus simply climbed into the boat and requested Peter to cast out. And so as he began uh, to teach the people, people, people understanding that, people, uh, that Peter had a feeling of obligation to Jesus, so he never questioned him, he never objected, he simply did what Jesus asked him to do, and he cast out. Jesus will intentionally target people because Peter was Jesus' uh, target all along. He was never about the people. It was never about the fish. It was about the one soul. There's a saying that we developed last year, one heart at a time. Jesus had intentionally targeted people, targeted Peter, that he might have a life-changing experience that he never thought possible. So he climbs into the boat, and he, he, he asked Peter, uh, to launch out into the deep because, again, Jesus will mention, he will intentionally target those lives that he wants to impact. Y'all remember the woman at the well? It was never about the water. It was always about the life, the soul, the heart, the life that would be changed forever. He chooses uh, a platform that was comfortable to Peter. This was P Peter's livelihood. This was, this was his expertise. He was a fisherman. Uh, this was his world, fishing, boats, water. This is, was Peter's world. This is what he did, and Jesus entered into his world to let Peter know that he was in control, and Peter was never in control. And then like a lake, like Lake Genesaret, small boats uh, don't remain in place uh, so that someone can stand there and present the word or begin to speak to other people. And so they need an experienced fisherman to keep the boat intact, to keep the boat stationary. And that's what surrendering your life to Christ does. It allows him full control of your life, that in the midst of a storm, in the midst of a pandemic, he'll keep your life steady and calm because that's what leadership, that's what the Holy Spirit will do. So Peter and his crew, hours, just hours ago, uh, has spent all night fishing. And the Bible tells us that they have come up empty-handed. They had nothing to show for their all-night labor. But Peter was about to catch a load of a lifetime that he never anticipated. So the story changes as Jesus shifts and he begins to engage Peter personally. He tells Peter, Peter, push out deeper and let down your nets for a catch. This sounds like a harmless thing to say, a, a harmless suggestion. And Peter listens to Peter, who was a, 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 a fisherman. Peter was a professional fisherman. He, he looks at Jesus, and, and if you're not careful, you read the text, but when he says that, Master, we've toiled all night, and we've come up with nothing, but nevertheless, at your word, we were will, will cast out. But, but there is some arrogance in Peter's comments. Uh, suggesting to a fisherman to cash out to the deep uh, was, was ludicrous. It didn't make sense. Uh, Peter was exhausted, been up all night with his crew, fishing, and they have nothing to show for it. But things happen when you allow your faith to be stretched and tested. Abraham had looked up towards the stars on a many a night, but this time God tells him to look up with faith and tell me what you see. Hannah had prayed for a child on many occasions, but when she went to the temple, she poured out her heart to the Lord, and the priest came back from the Word of God and said, this time it's different. Go home and stretch your faith, because soon and very soon there's, there's going to be a bouncing baby boy in your home, the man with the withered hand. Jesus said, on the Sabbath day, stretch out your hand. The man who was lame for some 38 years, who was brought by the pool of Bethesda, Jesus saw him and asked him, do you want to be healed? The man replied, sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is troubled. Jesus says, get up, take up your bed and walk. In other words, stretch out 
your faith. Peter, stretch out your faith and cast out this boat deeper and let down your nets for a catch. Any fisherman knows that you don't uh, let down your nets in the middle of the day in the deep waters because your nets are visible. And the fish are not just going to go into a visible net to be caught. So it's one thing for Jesus to tell Peter uh, as he's in his boat uh, how he's the preacher, how he's to deliver a message. But it's another thing for him now to enter into Peter's world and tell him how to fish. Because again, this is what Peter does. It says, Simon answered, Master, we've worked all night and we have nothing to show for it. But because you say so, I will let down my nest. His response sounds like a harmless and a noble thing to say. Uh, the word that he uses for master or teacher here can also be translated as boss or chief. Uh, Peter's tone was one of arrogance as he replies. And so let me, let me paraphrase Peter's, to Peter's tone and as, as he was actually speaking back to Jesus. He says, I know that you're a teacher and I've seen you heal. Uh, that's your expertise. That's what you do. Mine is fishing. Me and my crew have been up here all night and we've, we have nothing to show for, but, but that's our livelihood. Fishing is what we do. We fish at the right place at the right time. Every fisherman knows that you don't cast out into deep and you don't let down your nets in the middle of the day. We're tired, uh, we're sleepy, we're hungry, but instead of going home to rest, you asked me to cast out and I cast out the boat because I owed you one. You, you healed my mother-in-law, so I did that, but now you're stepping into my expertise. Now you're in my business. You're telling me how to do what I do every single day. You're asking me to launch out my boat in the middle of the day when other fishermen are watching me, my, my crew is watching me, and you're asking me to do the unthinkable, the impossible, something that just doesn't make sense, but because you asked so, boss, I'll do it. That's the tone that Peter is doing. He, he, he's arrogant. He's upset with Jesus. He's tired. He's frustrated. He's been up all night, and now this preacher comes and says, I want you to do something that does not make sense. I want you to stretch out your faith into this water and let down your nest. And I know that this does not make sense. And here's the problem. A lot of times God will tell you something that just does not make sense. He'll enter into your world of expertise and he'll suggest or he'll tell you to do something that does not make sense. There was a cartoon image that I saw recently that someone posted. Uh, and let me back up and just, just, just preface it by saying that uh, in this pandemic, there are things that God has now freed the church up to do, something that we could never do before, that we never considered doing before. We have always, and I've always uh, stated that God has given a vision to capture the Antelope Valley for Christ, Antelope Valley for Christ. But how do we do that? Well, the, the ties and the strings and the tradition have now been broken, that, that the Word of God is not just here on a Sunday morning, but it's, it's out on social media, it's out via the Internet. The Word of God is now traveling faster and further than we could ever imagine because we were forced out of our comfort zone. And so back to this, uh, this cartoon image. It was a cartoon image of Satan and one of God. And Satan says to God, with this COVID-19, I've closed all your churches. God replies, on the contrary, I just opened one in every home now. Uh, something that we've never considered before, uh, the church is now on the move. The church is on the go because we have been forced out of our comfort zone. So he says, Peter, push out into the deep, let down your nets for a catch. Peter reluctantly and with a bit of attitude looks at his crew and says, throw down the nets so we can teach this preacher that he doesn't know what he's talking about. Get ready to be stretched. The crew looking at Peter, the, Peter, the, the, the crew that works with Peter every day looks at Peter with astonishment, not confused and not understanding what he's allowing this, this preacher to do. Here, Peter, we, we, we know what we're doing, and yet you let this man tell you to do something that completely makes no sense. That's why it's important to surround yourself with people that trust the God in you. Because when God tells you to do something, people who don't really trust the God in you and people who really don't know God, people who go to church and, and have a fixation with the word God and with the word church, but they don't really know who God is, would never trust the word of God that is in you. So when God gives you a vision and God gives you a word, those same people who don't know God, who don't know the God in you, would never support the vision that God placed for you. That's why it's important to surround yourself with people of God who trust God like you trust God and who will trust the God in you because many times what happens is that you share your vision with the wrong person and they talk you out of what God has put and what God has birthed in you. And before long, you have aborted the very vision, the very miracle God has impregnated you with because you surrounded yourself 
with the wrong people. Gillian, God told Gillian that with 32,000, you have far too many, and that with that many, they might think they have accomplished what I have accomplished. And so God tells them to, to allow the ones that are scared to go home. 22,000 went home scared. But he says, you still have too many. You still have 10,000. He said, that's, that's still too many. Take them down to the water. Uh, and those that lap up the water like dog, keep those the rest sent home. 300 men were left. He said, can you imagine what Gideon said to 300 men when you had 32,000 that this is what God told me to do? That's why it's important to, to surround yourself with people who trust the God in you. Peter looks at his crew with almost Eric's and said, just like the boss said, do throw your nets out. And the text implies that immediately, immediately, immediately when the nets hit the water, the fish jumped into the nets, so much so that the nets were so full that they began to break. Peter's still not understanding what happened. Uh, in disbelief and excitement, he, he, he signals to his partner, and he's careful not to yell out over the water because sound travels over the water. So he signals for his partner to come because he has found a gold mine. He has found and he has hit the lottery. Right now, all that's on Peter's mind is money and fish. This is money. This is what I do. I have just hit the lottery. He signals his partner. They come, and the word says, as soon as the nets hit, the fish began to fill that boat up so much that that boat began to sink, and then it hits Peter. He's in the presence of holiness. Isaiah says, woe to me, I've cried, and I am ruined. For I'm a man of unclean lips, and, I'm, and I live among a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord God. Almighty, this is what happens when you're face to face with holiness. When you face to face with holiness, you see yourself as you really are. You don't see yourself as this smart person, this educated person, this person who knows it all, but you see yourself as a person that is worthless. Without God's help, I can do nothing. Peter, the Bible says, he falls at the knees of Jesus and says, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Early in the text, the Bible says that Peter's called him master, teacher, boss. But here, when he looks at himself for who he is, and he looks at the face of holiness, he says, Lord. He says, Lord. The lesson that Peter has learned from being all night long, it meant nothing to him. Being in the presence of Jesus, this preacher who, who healed his mother-in-law, that meant nothing, but I owed him one. I let him use my boat. He began to preach, and then he saw a miracle that he could never accomplish. This, this catch, something in his wildest dreams Peter never could think or could imagine that he would take home such a haul that day that he fell down at his knees. And the Bible says that he left all. The fish were no longer important. The money meant nothing to him. The position, the title meant nothing because I'm in the presence of holiness. My faith has been stretched beyond what I could ever imagine. The crowd around Peter, they were gone. His crew were sitting there watching Peter as he's on his knees crying out to God. Peter didn't care what they thought. When it's just you and God, when, you just, when you're face to face with holiness, you don't care about who's saying what. You don't care about what they're talking about you and how they're whispering about you. All you know is that I'm in the presence of holiness because he has just altered and changed my life. Uh, Job says, my ears have heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. He says, from this point on, Peter, you will catch men. And interesting enough, the word for catch here means catch alive. That when you're catching fish, fish will die soon after they're out the water. But Peter, when you catch men, you're catching men alive and they'll live because you're giving them life. You're giving them my word. Keep stretching your faith towards God Almighty. Keep, keep believing God for the impossible, even in this pandemic, even in this time of uncertainty. Understand that as long as you allow your faith to be stretched to the point that God can do the impossible. There is nothing God cannot do. And I'm discovering that on a personal basis, that when I struggle to know that what ministry is today, God says what you thought was ministry is not what I gave you. But now what I have given you, now what is in front of you, now you have the ability to reach out past what you thought. Your goal was the Antelope Valley, but he said my goal was always the world. So now through the media of social media and through the internet, your word can be reached not just in Little Rock, 
But across the world today, as the world today is united with one cause, one purpose, because we're all in the same position, we're all in this pandemic, we're all in a mood of uncertainty, but God says in the midst of uncertainty, tell them who I am. Share with them that my word is real. Share with them that I am who I said I am, that I love those who are unlovable. The truth is none of us have ever earned the love of God, but it says all have sinned and fallen short my glory. But it says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Keep stretching, keep believing. There's an old song that says, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou would draw thy help from me, whether shall I go? Today is the day that every believer, every born-again believer can share the faith of God across this world. You can get on the phone. You can do it through social media. You can share the faith. Let somebody know that God is still who he is. Let them know that God is still very much in control. But let them know there are times that our faith needs to be stretched past our comfort zone. And right now, Livingstone, we have been stretched past the very comfort zone. For some 70 years, we have met at this one location. But now God says, I have spread you out. I have freed you to share my word. Now, True discipleship should take place. Now true love should take place. He says, by this, by this, by this, will all men know that you are my disciples. Why? Because you have love one to another. It does not make sense to say that I have accomplished something for 70 years and I don't have love. The text suggests that Jesus entered to the world of the people without waiting for them to enter into his world. Discipleship took place that day. It changed the life of Peter forever because Jesus went into his world. Livingstone, go into the world of those family members that you thought were helpless and hopeless. Go into the world, the world of those friends that you have not yet shared your faith with and you have not invited them on Sunday. Now you don't have to wait to Sunday to invite them. You can invite them every single day. Again, the cartoon text says, Satan says, I have closed all of your, your churches. And God says, on the contrary, I have opened one in every home you now have the ability to share the Word of God like never before. Stretch your faith. Stretch past your comfort zone. It's not supposed to be comfortable. It's not supposed to be in your control. It's supposed to be in the control of the Father. God and God only gets to, cre- gets to praise and the credit for what he is doing and for what he is about to do. Livingstone, God is doing a wonderful work even in the midst of this pandemic, in the, in the midst of our lives. I have seen the gifts continue to come. I've seen the offerings continue to come every single day. They're, being, they're coming by mail every day. They're coming through the uh, uh, online giving. Uh, people are actually physically bringing them up here. People are doing what we thought would never happen if the church was closed on a Sunday. Miracles are still happening. Prayers are still going out. Gifts are still being given. Lives are still being saved and changed and impacted. Keep, keep praying, keep believing, and keep stretching. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence and your power and your anointing. God, there is no one like you. And God, right now, the truth is many of us are, God, we're uncertain. God, we say that we will bless you at all times, but God, right now, it's a hard time because we're, we're uncertain. But God, I pray and I thank you for stretching our faith past our comfort zone that we're forced to do what we said we would do. We said we would bless you at all times. That includes today. That includes a struggle. That includes a storm. So God, God, we even thank you for the storm. Not thanking you for lives that are lost, God, but thank you that it has caused us to refocus and to reshift our attention back to you because this is your church. These are your people. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that it's anybody who's at the sound of my voice, God, who does not know you personally. God, I pray that they would pray the simple words to allow Christ to come into their lives, that he would impact their life, that they would be different from this day forward and never be the same. God, I pray for healing for those that are hurting right now. Many of us, and maybe even a few of us, know people that have been affected by this coronavirus. And uh, God, I pray for healing for them. God, I know that you are compassionate and a healer. There is nothing that you cannot do. So, God, I pray that your word would go out and your power would go out, and, God, healing would take place. Uh, And we know that the world that we know, God, will probably never be the same. But, God, you will always be the same because your word says you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So, God, we give you praise for that. In Jesus' wonderful name, we thank you. Amen. 
Amen. Again, Livingstone, happy birthday. Uh, asking the people of God to continue to do what God has called you to do. He says, go ye therefore and make disciples. Jesus went into the world of Peter. It's now up to you to go into their world. You don't have to go out physically and touch anybody, but you can reach them through uh, the telephone. You can reach them through your prayers. You can reach them through social media. But don't allow uh, this shelter in place to, to shelter in the Word of God. Don't allow it to, to keep it shut up in you, but allow it to smooth and to spread out like never before, that the church would be impacted and that God's house would be full like God intended for it to be. Again, happy birthday. God bless you. Be safe and know that God has never given up on you. In Jesus' name. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Sing it again. I surrender all to you. Hallelujah. Everything I give to you. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. I surrender all to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Everything I give to you. Hallelujah. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing, Lord. Withholding nothing. 